we didn't play the way we need to. There's no question about that. Um, offensively, you know, we have to really get all 11 guys doing the, their job on every play. You know, as you watch the video, you make a mistake here, one guy, one guy here. Um, you know, Puma had some tough luck early with some drop passes. Uh, but sometimes the drop passes have to, you know, um, be on time in the right area. Um, so that kind of that hurt us a lot early in the game. Uh, Malik's done a nice job. You know, he's come in and given us energy and given us uh, um, a lot of fire. I did like the way we ran the ball in the second half, uh, and that, that's happened in the last two games where we've been able to really run the football well, handing it to a running back, and that's something that we really wanted to work on in our last two games. Um, I like the way Dave Williams ran the ball. He, he ran with power. He pressed the holes, made the cutbacks, uh, got the ball in the end zone, um, and did a nice job there. You know, defensively, I was happy with some of our young guys getting a lot of reps and a lot of production. You know, Robert Hicks, I thought, played really well and fast for us. Jarrett Jackson made some huge plays for us, particularly that, that sack at the, at the end of the game. Um, you know, even Yasir was in on that, did a nice job. His job was to spy the quarterback and then add on, and he shows his speed and quickness on that. So that worked out real well. Um, Tabarius Peterson had another good game, which was really good to see. Uh, and then Treshawn Smith had a really good game for us, you know, came in and made some great tackles, made a huge uh, pass breakup um, that helped us win the game. So it's good to see him getting healthier and faster and playing more reps. Uh, again, I thought our special teams uh, had, a, had a positive influence on the game. Rajay's return and, and uh, the way Mason's kicking the ball. Devontae Pete really stood out. Um, giving us energy and leadership on special teams uh, and on offense. But he's kind of back to where he was a couple years ago when he was voted special teams captain with the way the leadership that he's providing out there, and, and that helps us a lot. Uh, and then Quinn Head did a really nice job on special teams. So that's another new guy that showed a lot of speed, had a nice tackle inside the 15-yard line, and um, you know, really did a good job. He was all in three out of the four special teams and, and executed and did real well for us. Um, we've got to play better football. That's the bottom line is we've got to play better football. We've got to be able to take it from the practice field onto the game field um, with the right timing and the uh, right pre precision in the passing game uh, and put it all together. Put it all together with the protection, the quarterback's uh, vision and, and uh, timing and the receivers catching the ball and running after the catch. You know, three, three early games in, in my uh, career, I don't know if we've had less explosive plays ever, you know, and, and, uh, and particularly with the receivers and in the passing game, I would expect it to have more big plays than we're getting right now, and that's something that has to, you know, change. Um, I would throw that post route to Jalen Smith any day of the week. You know, he ran a great route. He's the ball's right there. He make that catch 99 out of 100 times, and I've got all the confidence in the world in him. Um, he, he'll come back, and he'll you know he'll have some games this this year where he's the reason we win the game, um, just like he did a year ago. So uh, he's really getting back to to where he needs to be. Uh, but he you know he he can make that catch. He knows he he can make it, and obviously he just has to be able to keep his confidence. So. With that, I'll just open up for questions. What's the status of London? Oh, yeah, London. I should have talked about him first. London's doing good. You know, uh, I went over to the hospital yesterday after the TV show to see him. Um, they, they were bringing him down for an MRI. He came walking into my office a little bit later on yesterday afternoon. Uh, I was in good spirits, feeling good. Um, we talked for a while, and... and uh, you know, he, he feels like he'll be back and going at some point. I'm not sure when that'll be, obviously, but uh, he was he was in really good spirits. You know, they sometimes do that for precautionary reasons, and obviously, you know, it's always hard on everybody, um, both sides of the field. Both, you know, no one ever wants to see that happen. So we're just grateful, and and uh, you know, I know a lot of our players were saying prayers for him, um, but we're good that he's he's healthy and good to go. Bobby, you made it a point um, in preseason to say that you thought your offense would be better. You thought your offense would be better. <laughs> <laughs> what, 
this year. Uh, I remember saying that. I mean, yeah, ACC media days. Yeah, I said I expected them to be better, but I expect a lot of things. <laughs> Uh, I mean, and I get a, I get some and some I don't get, but um, think you overestimated or what? Do you no, mean? I mean you have to have high expectations. You have to have high expectations, and you know I'm looking at what we got coming back, and I feel good about what's going on. Uh, but right now we're not obviously getting that done, so we've got to regroup. We've got to do a better job of coaching. We got to do a better job of playing, and we got to make sure we all stay together, which I'm happy about. You know, I'm happy about the way the locker room was at halftime, and the way guys stepped up, and um, the energy and, and leadership that we took the field with the second half um, was something that allowed us to come back and win the game. So, uh, but obviously, we're not, you know, playing the way we should. The quarterback competition is it an open competition, or do you expect Malik to be the starter? No, Malik will start the game. Yeah, you know, he's had uh, 12 possessions that he started, you know, and, and scored eight times in those 12 possessions. Uh, he gives us energy. He, he gets the guys around him to, to play hard. Um, you know, I had Puma up in my office yesterday. I feel bad for him. Obviously, it's not what I expected. It's not what he expected. It's hard on him. Um, but he'll, he'll, he'll come back. He'll regroup. And... Um, but like I told him, I got to do what I think is best for the team. And, uh, you know, right now I, that's what I feel is best. That conversation with Puma, did it go well? Do you, do you feel like you it need went him good. to yeah, we, You know, obviously it's hard. You know, it's not a, at all what, what uh, he expected and how he expected the things to go, you know. Um, and, you know, I thought he played well against Alabama. Um, but we just haven't been driving the ball and getting the ball in the end zone. So. Uh, but yeah, it's hard on him. It's it's hard on me. It's not what we wanted. Um, you know, like I told him, I'm I'm still a big fan of his, and I expect him to come back. And he's got to keep a positive attitude. That's going to be the biggest challenge: is to keep a positive attitude, be a good teammate, be a good leader, um, and get ready. Obviously, media fans focus on quarterbacks so much, but you mentioned it's the entire offense. Are there any other? <clears throat> position changes that you're considering and, and what other spots on the offense really need to step up? You know, I like the way that the offensive line has started to come together and gelled and Nathan Sheeler had a really good game. You know, that's his best game that he's had here. Um, you know, uh, he played really well in there. I think with our big tackles on the edge that that helps us a lot. And uh, I think that we'll, we'll do a good job of continuing to get better and, and running the football. You know, Day Williams took a huge step forward in the second half to, to carry the ball the way he did and, um, you know, made some big runs, got the ball in the end zone, you know, a guy that we really trust in pass protections. So uh, it was good to see him, him do that. I think that's the healthiest that he's really looked all fall uh, and the most acceleration that he's had all fall. And you started to see it in practice this week, um, so it was great to see it show up in the game. Would he start also on Saturday? I mean, it, sometimes starters are determined on what personnel group runs out there first, you know. So, yeah, you know, I would anticipate that he would, but, you know, we got to wait and see what personnel group we throw out there. Uh, the other injured guys, do you have an update on D. Smith? It seemed like he was a big loss for you. Uh, no, I don't. I, uh, Mondays, we're, we're out, of, out of practice today. We don't have any work today. It's their day they have labs and school, so they come in at different times throughout the day. Um, so I'll meet with Matt Summers here later tonight. How, on the defense with John and Dorian out, how difficult has it been in the front seven, and, and what ways do you have of, of making up for those absences with two of the more important players on that defense? Yeah, well, certainly we miss John um, as in his leadership and pass rush ability. Uh, I do think the guys that have been filling in for him have done a nice job. You know, TP's <laughs> continues to get better. Jarrett has made some huge plays for us and shows his ability. You know, that's a big guy that can move that's going to end up just getting better and better. Um, but we miss John. There's no question about that. Dorian's loss is uh, a big one because he was the communicator. He was the guy that was, you know, making the calls, telling everyone what to do, making the checks. Um, so, you know, that was a lot of teaching, a lot of things to, to get done in that short period of time. But I thought Robert Hicks played well. He played hard. You know, he's a he's a really good football player, and, and he's just physical and fast and plays hard. I mean, he still has a lot to learn, you know, but he did play well. 
Puma, is, is, I think he threw three passes and all three the receivers got hands on him. Did you, did, looking back on it, did you feel like you took him out too soon? Given the effort? No, I didn't think so. You know, I, I, I felt like, you know, he did have some bad luck, you know, um, and he also, you know, I think probably the, the one I didn't like was the sack. You know, he, he's out of the pocket and he's, you know, knows he can just throw the ball away. We did have a guy open earlier on that. Um, but to go from second and 10 to second and 16 or 17, I think it, what it might even have been, that's hard. Um, and I just felt like, you know, all week long they rotated reps in practice. Uh, and I felt like it was the right thing to do. I was looking for some energy and some, you know, change in the offense moving the ball. How does the passing game change with Malik in charge? I mean, we do some different things, but you, they've all been, both been executing the same thing. Um, you know, Malik can throw the ball down the field. He can he can make the throws we need to make. Obviously, you saw that on the strike on the post route that we didn't catch. Um, you know, I like the pass, the next pass that he made, because it was a it was a pass to Seth Dawkins. Uh, some people might uh, say that, hey, that ball was behind him and Seth made a great catch, but it actually was a perfect throw because it was the only way he could throw it where it had be, been completed um, because there was a defender further out uh, wide of Seth, so he had to slow him down, throw it to his back shoulder, uh, and cause Seth to make the sliding catch. So it was a, it was the only place he could have threw it. I thought that was his best throw of the night, to be honest with you. That that throw in particular, does it mean something as well that he made a almost perfect throw down on that post and it wasn't caught and that he didn't get his head down and he actually came out and executed the very next play? Is that is that important you, to see? Yeah, I think so. I think it's real important. You know, I think it's something you have to do as a quarterback is put the play previous play behind you. Whether it's a good play, whether it's a bad play, whether I throw a touchdown or an interception, the most important thing as a quarterback is the next play. Um, you know, and we've had guys that have had trouble sometimes after they throw a touchdown. You know, they just want to celebrate and pump and come back and aren't really focused for the next two or three pay plays. Sometimes you have quarterbacks that, you know, have trouble after an interception or after so something bad happens that they – you know, can't move on to the next play. So that's something you always work on with quarterbacks is the next play is the most important. Since we didn't ask you about Western last week in this press conference, Virginia this week uh, got more of a running quarterback. They've scored, I think, 45, I think it was, on Saturday. They're usually a pretty athletic team. What are the primary challenges facing them? Yeah, we've got to be able to, you know, do a good job defensively. Uh, the quarterback can throw the ball and run it. Uh, they're running more option game than they have in the past, so that's something that, that's new to them and also new for us to defend. Defensively, they still have the same uh, unique style where they play a three down front and a four down front. And, um, you know, they've got a lot of guys over there that we played against before. Um, the outside linebacker who's a really good player, an inside linebacker who started for a couple years against us, uh, the same corner that we played against last year. So we're familiar with a lot of them, but uh, you know they always do a good job in their defensive package. Um, but I think it's a, you know something that we have to go execute, play well. Uh, but we're going to have to defend them. You know we're going to have to eliminate their big plays. We always worry about that receiver they have who's explosive, and you know they get them the ball a lot of different ways. Western rain for more yards than, than they have in a while. Is there any particular reason why they were so effective? What does your neat defense need to do, rush defense? Yeah, I mean, they were pretty stubborn about handing it off and ru running it. And, and in the first half, we gave up some plays that we shouldn't have. Um, I was happy the way we came back in the, in the second half and defended the run. I think we held them to 54 yards and 3.0 yards a, an attempt in the second half. Um, but certainly not what we need in the in the first half. And... I think the thing that showed up more than anything is getting off the field on third down. That's where we really have to improve on defense is getting off the field, uh, you know, and particularly when it's third and eight plus. Coach, you have talked about Hassan and, and JVN getting them more touches, but you've gotten behind or had to kind of play a different style both weeks. Is it a matter of trying to get them in the game plan a little earlier, or do you like what you see when you've gotten them in there? Yeah, I've liked what I've seen, you know. Um, we didn't have a lot of possessions and a lot of, you know, snaps the other night. So that, I think in the second half, we had really, you know, four possessions um, and we moved the ball and scored, you know. Uh, I think we had a field goal and two touchdowns and then, you know, ran out the clock. 
So we have to do a good job of getting more possessions, more time, you know, and a lot of that has to come in the first half. You know, we're not playing the, the game the way I would like to play it. I, would, I always like to play it. We're aggressive. We're good on offense. We go score points in the first half. We get ahead. Uh, then the other team has to throw the ball. Um, that's when you get sacks and turnovers and, you know, when the other team has to play from behind. We have to, we have to force those issues by being able to score on offense uh, in the first quarter. On the, on the block field goal, can you kind of go through that? Because it looked like on the replay, it looked like you had the entire line was all, all the way back there. and A number of guys could have blocked it. You've talked about that's an improvement this year. Why, why do you think you guys are better at that? Yeah, we've worked really hard at it. And, and one of the reasons we worked really hard at it is the, for the uh, field goal team. You know, for the where the threats are on our field goal team, and the fact that we feel like we need to do a better job than we did a year ago. Um, so in doing that, then I made the defense work harder at it and get the looks at it. Uh, and then it just so happened that goal wire has something unique timing of when to elevate and get his hand up in the air. You know, um, we're doing a better job of penetrating and getting push. Um, we have a block team. Uh, where sometimes, some years, we've just put the base defense out there. And, um, you know, that's something I didn't want to do. I wanted to get bright guys on the field and, and have a block team. So Big Dez helps us on there. You know, he pushes the pile. Jared helps us because he really can accelerate and push the pile. Um, Goldwire got a good block. I think, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, Marlon getting a block for us. He's, I think, in junior college, he had four blocked field goals. So. It's one of those things that you you just try to work hard at, and you know it sure paid off the other night. Uh, but we did do that in practice. You know, I think we've had three or four blocks in practice that were very similar. I know that I know that um, Goldwire got three of them. He said after the game that uh, it was a bad call on your part, fourth down. What was going through your mind? What was your thinking when you made that call? I don't think anything I was going through. I think it was just completely lost my mind. <laughs> That's exactly. You're exactly right. So, what the heck? It's the nature of the business, man. And it's a bad call. It's a bad call. When you make it, it's a good call. It's just that that's how it goes, you know? But I'm not going to lose my mind again. Anything else for Coach? Do you have the card on when to go for two, and what, what's yeah. your thinking on when yeah, it's we time do. to go for two? Yeah, we do. We do, and and the card said go for two. Um, you know, but the timing of the game is something that we've really studied over the years, and and if there's enough time, we've now determined that we're going to forget the card in this situation and just go for one, um, and then that helped us not, you know. If you don't make it and it's 14-12, then all of a sudden it's bad, you know. So, um, and then I was second guessing that too late in the game, thinking, are we ever going to get the ball back? Maybe I should have went for two. You know what I mean? That's why I actually said those words to myself when we were having trouble and they made that long drive, you know. And I thought we would get it back right away. They made them start on the 10-yard line, and you know we just didn't do it. So. But yeah, you have a guy upstairs, and and what he's instructed to say is exactly that. The card says go for two, or tell the defense that the card says they'll go for two. He doesn't say go for two. He says the card says, and sometimes the card says um, early in the game kick. You know, fourth quarter go for two. So it was right at the start of the fourth quarter. Um, we had discussed it. And I said, no, we're just going to go for one here. Um, and that has kind of been a change throughout the career. You know, I remember we lost a game one time when I was coaching with John L. And we went for two early and didn't get it. Um, and then it compounds the next time. And um, we actually scored, you know, more touchdowns than the other team and lost the game. So it's, that's one of those things where, you, it, you know, sometimes you don't believe the card. Is this your card, or is there like a generic card that we can give? Yeah, you? it's pretty. Yeah, we can give you a copy of it. It's pretty close to probably being <laughs> the same for it? everybody. Is there some coach that came up with it somewhere? Well, no, I mean, it's just something that you've studied over the years, and it's you know, it's kind of math, I guess. You know, so like, 
we had a situation where we were going to go for two. It's like if you're ahead by six, go for two. Or no, ahead by six, go for one. Ahead by five, go for two. So it was whether we were going to be up by five or not. So you're always thinking, you know, we want to be ahead by seven or, you know, ahead by three. So you're kind of always working on those numbers of touchdowns and field goals. And um, so the card there said down by two, go for two. Uh, but early in the game, it's kind of proven over the years that you kick the field goal or kick the extra point, And then if you have to catch up later, you catch up later. One of the trends in the NFL is, is going for it more on fourth down. I know not that fourth and three, that kind of thing, but, but going for it more. Have you found not yourself? Not on fourth and three? Well, yeah. Have you found yourself? <laughs> fourth and 20? Right. Have you, have you found yourself going for it more? Oh, there's a lot of that out there, yeah, the analytics. Yeah, there's a lot of analytics that say go for it on fourth down and, you know, I've got all that information and, you know, it, like I said, it works good if you get it. You don't get it, it doesn't work good. It's just how it is, you know. That's that's the way it goes. But the analytics do tell you that the, you should go for it on fourth down more and you have a better chance of winning the game. But that's if you make it on fourth down. Speaking of analytics, only 8% of the kickoffs after three weeks have been fair caught. Does that surprise you across college football? Are they all just going in the end zone? Well, you know. I think the I, I think the touchback is like up like ten percent from last year is what yeah. the was is what it was. Is that have you uh, changed your thought after? Not three really. Weeks? No. You know, I I get mad when when we practice it and work really hard on it, and then they kick them all in the end zone, and your you know your your statistics there should say to just take the ball to twenty five. Mm -hmm. So that's what I get upset on is when, you know, you work hard on the kickoff returns and then you never get a chance to return it. So, but, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really know how that would come out. You know, the other night, too, is we kicked the ball in the end zone and the guy had caught in the ball and then one of their guys came over and made a big block on one of our guys. Um, that seems like you're defeating the purpose, that we should be blowing the whistle when he catches the ball in the end zone and then the block's not made because it's all supposed to be about player safety. Um, and then they forget about that sometime because I had a big discussion with the officials on, okay, it's a kickoff after a safety. You fair catch the ball. Now do we get the ball at the 35 or the 40 yard line? You know what the answer is? No. Like how? How? Do you know, why don't you? It's about player safety, right? Yeah. So they should mm -hmm. should be, it should adjust just like when you kick it out of bounds, but it's not. It's wherever you fair catch it if it's kicked off after a safety. So that that changes a little bit.